Go daddy. Go daddy. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Go what are daddy. you doing? What are you doing? Go. Whoa, what are you doing? What are you doing? I'm preparing for our Danica Patrick video. Oh. And welcome into the Rowdy Studios, where we take a break from Carl Watch 2011 to resume Danica Watch dun, dun. 2011. A little item from Jenna Fryer of the Associated a throwaway. Press. A throwaway. Buried, really, in her column on Carl Edwards. Jenna wrote this, quote, There's no talk of Danica Patrick, who is in the final stages of putting together her full-time NASCAR plan. Patrick is apparently going to run a full nationwide schedule with JR Motorsports and run a limited cup schedule with Tony Stewart in preparation for an eventual full cup schedule. What are we to make of that? Is Danica coming to NASCAR? Well, I don't, I don't see any reason why she wouldn't. I think all signs have been pointing in that direction, but it is interesting that it's sort of been obscured by the bigger story of Carl Edwards' deliberations, that we haven't really heard about this negotiation. We haven't talked about it. Nobody's asked about it. it I mean, it might have something to do with the fact that Danica's not around right not now. Not at track. But still, it is interesting that it's sort of flown under the radar, isn't it? Well, and the interesting thing to me is when you look back to what she said the last time she was really talking about this, her last nationwide series race at Daytona, she sort of indicated she was seriously looking at NASCAR and was pretty happy racing in Nationwide. I mean, obviously, I'm racing in NASCAR, and I've made it no... I've, I've not made anyone wonder whether or not I like it, and, uh, and um, so... But other than that, you know, these things, as I've said from the beginning of the year, are complicated and um, they take time. And, um, you know, whether I'm coming here or not is yet to yet to be signed, sealed and delivered. And I might not be. I mean, she's really gone about as far as she's going to go in IndyCar. I mean, she's she's been she's made a stab at it. She's fully committed to it for a number of years. And she's sort of plateaued. It, it makes perfect sense to me that she would jump to stock cars. She's had a bit of success this year. Three top tens and six starts. Uh, appar uh, two of them were tenth, right? But it's still pretty good for a woman without a ton of nationwide series starts, without a ton of stock car experience. And the other thing she said, Cutler, was, I just want to do what makes me happy. It comes down to my gut and my desire and where I feel like I'll be the happiest and where I feel like I'll be able to have the most success. And then um, from, those, from those thoughts, then, uh, then um, my team explores the options. And so it always, and, but it always starts with, with, um, with where I want to be. If Danica's happy, then God knows I'm happy. So a couple questions here. Number one, we've just seen Paul Menard win a race at the Brickyard. And we know a criticism that he's received has been, well, it's not fair that you got this opportunity, Paul, to drive this race car because of your dad's money. We've heard similar criticisms, Levy, that Danica Patrick, she hasn't earned her spot in a nationwide series. It's only because she's a woman, because she's famous, because she's exploited her sexuality that she's been given a ride in the nation, uh, Nationwide Series. I would much prefer Danica Patrick to exploit her sexuality than Paul Menard. I'm with you there. And I think the thing is, everyone gets rides for different reasons, uh, and it's really what you do with the opportunity that counts, not so much why you got it. And I have nothing but respect for the way Danica has approached this foray into NASCAR, starting in the Nationwide Series, admitting what she doesn't know, coming in with a sense of humility, and really learning and, and improving almost every time she's, she's gone out. Well, look, let's say the journey from now, or from the beginning to becoming a Sprint Cup star, a Sprint Cup contender, is 10 steps. Well, she's probably taken step one. She's come into the Nationwide Series, she's learned, and she's clearly gotten a little better. It's still a long way to go to become a successful Sprint Cup driver for Danica Patrick, but I agree with you. She's gone about it the right way. She's clearly made progress, and more to the point, this is a move that can have a very positive impact on our sport because it'll bring a lot of people to watch NASCAR that haven't watched it before. And if we can get a diversity in terms of our successful driver lineup, you know, drivers who are out there competing um, on, on a weekly basis for wins or for top tens, if we can diversify that subgroup, then I think it will only strengthen our sport. Yeah, get more people interested in NASCAR, and that's a good thing. You know what I'd like to see? I would like to see Mark Martin 
sort of mentoring her in that Stuart Haas ride, that part-time ride at Stuart Haas. We know that Mark and Danica have had that sort of relationship before. Well, they've had a, a, a point at Dover where he came and offered her some advice and right. she really appreciated it. They share that. a sponsor. Mark Martin, we don't know what he's doing next season. If he went to that part-time ride and split it up with Danica a little bit and mentored her, I think that would be a great move. That'd be pretty cool. We'll see what happens. That's our look at Danica Watch 2011. And we can now return to Carl Watch. And we'll sing Go Daddy on the way. No, we won't. We're go not, Daddy. We're not going to do that anymore. Go Daddy. Eesh. Go Daddy. Rowdy.com. Say it like it is. Say what like it is. Rowdy.com. Go Daddy. Go Daddy. Okay. Go Daddy. Uh, what, what, what are you doing? Go Daddy. I'm preparing to talk about Danica Patrick. Go, Daddy. Go, Daddy. 